So you watch some TikToks and everyone was raving about this certain makeup product that made it out to be the greatest thing on earth. It's gonna do your laundry, fan you while you eat grapes by the pool. You bought it and got it home and it was crap. And now you're mad because you wasted your hard earned money on this product that does not work for you. But it's okay, I got you today. I'm gonna give you some tips on how to take those bad makeup products and still make them work for you. So the first bad makeup product we've all come across are patchy eyeshadows. Some patchy ass eyeshadows, they do not stick to the skin, they do not blend well, they're not smooth, they're not buttery at all. What you can do, this is the easiest one a lot of people know, is to apply a primer underneath. Everyone has their favorite primer that you can use. You guys know I love Painterly Paint Pop by MAC. I've been using this since 2008. It's an oldie but a goodie and it still hits. So I use that under some shadows that may not be the best performing. Now the only thing with primers is sometimes when you go to apply them on top, Top. They're gonna stick a little bit. They're gonna be a little bit harder to blend, but they will show up a little bit better because they have something to actually stick to. So if you're having a hard time with a patchy shadow, put a base underneath and instead of blending it from side to side like this, you're gonna start doing a patting or tapping motion. That's gonna give you the color impact that you need to is the technique that you apply it is patting versus swiping. Now, the other thing that you can do if you have a patchy eyeshadow is to take a colored stick like this or an eyeliner pencil in the same color. So if I have a beautiful green eyeshadow and it's patchy as hell and I'm mad it won't work, I can get a green eyeliner or a green eyeshadow stick and put it underneath and kind of blend it out and that's going to give me at least a color base to kind of hide the skin a little bit so when you put that patchy shadow on top it's not going to show as much because there's already color underneath. With this technique basically you're using the shadow as just setting the cream product down. Its purpose is just helping these guys not to crease or fade throughout the day. And then the other option that you can do is you can mix this eyeshadow with a solution like a mixing medium, a eye drop formula. You can even use those cleansing waters that you see to cleanse your makeup off. All of those work. Just something that's some sort of liquid. You can scrape the eyeshadow with a little spatula, mix it in with that liquid, and you can turn it into a liquid shadow. You could also turn it into an eyeliner. There's a lot of good things that you could do with patchy eyeshadows if you just scrape them a little bit. You can even mix them with an eye cream, you guys, and turn it into a cream eye shadow so don't feel like you have to get stuck throwing that out you can mix it with other things to still get them to perform a little bit better versus just a dry eyeshadow and then the last thing that you can do is use them on your face so you know for the eyes generally we like something very pigmented something very high intense color but for the cheeks you know with bronzers contours blushes and things like that we don't need it to be as pigmented so if you have a patchy shadow that may not be pigmented it's not performing really well you can use it on the face like I use a lot of brown eyeshadows for a bronze cleansing, contouring, I'll use them to fill in the brows. Any pink, coral, you know, red, purple lip colors, I'll mix with a lip gloss, apply it to the lips. There's so many different things you can use. Don't feel like you are stuck with just putting them on the eyes. Use them all over the face. Bad product number two is dry spackle-like concealer. I'm gonna say a name. I'm gonna get some heat for this because I know so many people love this one. Tarte Shape Tate. I'm sorry, you guys. It was crap for me. I know many people love it, but I think to because I have dry skin and maybe that I'm older. It looked like literal speckle under my eyes. I was so mad. I was like, I bought it because so many people were talking about it. I got it home. I was like, this is crap. I was mad. I was like, I spent good money on this sucker. So what you can do is to thin it out, add some moisture to it if it's too, too dry, is get some face oil and mix a drop of it in. Now, before you mix it in the actual tube, you guys, what I like to do is put it on the back of my hand and then take your face oil. And it could be any oil, you guys. It could be almond oil, rose hair, Pohaba, it could be an actual face oil. Put a drop in there and then take your normal concealer brush that you're going to use anyways. Just mix it on the back of your hand and look, there you go. It kind of smooths it out. It gives it more luminosity. It helps it spread a lot more smoothly. It just needs a little bit more oil. It's basically how it's going to be made anyways. It needs some oil in there as a concealer, but if they formulated it to be too dry, add some oil to that sucker. The other thing that you guys can do is take a concealer and your eye cream and mix them together as well. Kind of the same technique as what we did with the oil, but this is now going to turn it into a hydrating, almost like an eye CC cream or a BB cream where it's just smooth. It's very hydrating. It's not going to give you as much coverage if you're mixing it in, but it's still going to give you the hydration you need. And it's perfect for those days when you just need a little bit of coverage, but again, you don't want it to be as dry. So the next thing you can do with your concealer is put it on top of a silicone primer. So you know how we talked about silicones. You can tell if it says dimethicone, methicone, 
pentacone, cyclopentasiloxane, anything that ends in own or oxane is going to be a silicone. So look for that in your ingredients on the back of your primer. So if you put your primer down and kind of set it under the eyes, if you put your concealer on top, it's not going to look as dry because you have a barrier between your skin and the concealer with that primer in there. You have those silicones, that kind of gel-like consistency that's going to help that concealer glide a little bit and again, make it look less dry. The third bad makeup product is foundations that are the wrong color. We all have those too. So the great thing about that is there's a lot of brands now, especially LA Girls, the most popular one, that has come out with colorants to mix in with your foundation. They'll come in a variety of shades like yellow, blue. I've even seen a green one, a white, a black. What those are going to do is change the, either the undertone or the depth of color. So if your foundation is too light, you can add a little bit of black pigment. If it's too dark, you can add a touch of white. Or if it's too warm a foundation, if it looks really orange on you, you need to cool it down. You're going to add a bit of blue in there. So there's a ton of videos all over TikTok. I can do some hand here as well if you guys want, but just simply getting a mixer with it and changing the color will work for you. The other thing that I sometimes will do is if a foundation is too light, I'll apply it all over my face. But what I'll then do is I'll take my bronzer and I'll start applying it more generously around the face. So I'll come in under the cheekbones. I'll go around the crown. I'll go under the jawline. I'll go down the side of the nose. By the time I'm done bronzing up my entire face, it's going to make that foundation that looked too light originally be a little bit deeper looking. It's almost like you're reverse highlighting. So instead of having a foundation that's too dark or your natural skin color and highlighting it with, you know, that triangle, the light concealer, you're going to do the opposite. You're starting with a light color and then you're adding depth of color around it with a cream or a powder bronzer or contour powder. And then if the foundation is dark, you're going to do the opposite. You're going to get a concealer or another foundation that's a little bit light for you and you are going to apply it in the areas you want it highlighted. So usually we like the center of our face highlighted. So the center of the forehead right here, kind of under the eyes in that triangle shape, a little bit here under the cheekbone. So that way we get a nice kind of contour to kind of sculpt out those cheeks, a little bit on the chin and down the center of the nose. Those are the most common places to add lightness to your foundation. So that way if your foundation is too dark, you're going to leave it over on all the other areas and just highlight it on top with a lighter concealer or foundation. Next bad makeup product is a bronzer that is either too muddy or too orange. So what you're going to do in this instant, you're going to use those patchy ass eyeshadows I told you about in step one. We're going to use them here. So if your bronzer is too orange, let me show you an example what I have. Hold on, you guys. So I have this MAC powder that I've had for years. You can tell because it hit pan, but it's pretty orange. So I use this actually to warm up the face. I don't use it really as a bronzer contour. I use it all over the face to kind of warm up my face when I need some zhuzhing when I'm looking a little tired, you know? But with something like this, if it's too orange, I'm going to go in with a cool toned eyeshadow. So let me show you an example. So I have eyeshadows like this. Do you guys see how these are warm eyeshadows, but these are cool tones? So if I have something like this, this bronzer is obviously a little bit orange. I'm going to go in with a brown that is a cool tone shade, probably something in here, and I'm going to blend them on top. And mixing those two colors together, let me show you. Do you see the difference between here's that bronzer, here's a cool tone eyeshadow. If I put them together on top, it's going to neutralize it. And look, it's not orange anymore because I mixed the colors together. So that's another great way you can use those patchy eyeshadows is to switch up your bronzer that is too orange or too muddy. Now, if a bronzer or a contour is too muddy where it looks like gray, have you guys seen those contour powders you put it on? It looks like death. It looks like someone took a gray streak and put it under your cheekbone. It's because it's too cool for you. So now you got to warm it up. So now that's where I'm going to go in with this warm tone shade here. I'm going to go in with something that has a lot of oranges in there, but it's still in the brown family. I'm going to put that on top of that contour powder. That's going to warm it up and make it appear more neutral versus being straight up cool toned. Bad product number five is a foundation that is oxidized. Now, again, this is where it is turned straight up orange. So we can do the color correcting thing, but I want to tell you why foundations oxidize. I have notes here, so I apologize if I read it because this is what a chemist said. While no single ingredient is responsible for a foundation oxidizing, usually it's because there's an interaction between the oils and the pigments in a foundation. And what happens is it's interacting with your skin's natural pH level. So if you are acidic or if there's humidity in the air or something, some sort of environmental or personal thing on your skin that's reacting with it, it's going to cause it to oxidize. So one fix for that obviously is you use a primer underneath. And I'm a big fan of the silicone based primers. I would say about 95 to even 98% of foundations out there are going to be silicone based. So they are going to have a lot of silicones. First ingredients always like water. It's usually cyclo 
well, pentasiloxane or dimethicone or something like that. So if you put a silicone based primer underneath, it's going to create a barrier between your skin and the foundation, helping it to have less of a chance of oxidizing because it's not sitting directly on your skin, which can be a little too acidic or too alkaline or whatever is going on. And it can interact with that foundation that causes it to oxidize. Another thing that you can do too is because the natural oils in your skin can react with the foundation is you can use a pressed powder or a loose powder, apply it underneath your foundation. What it's going to do is absorb your natural oils. It's going to keep them from breaking through and mixing with that foundation. And that could be another reason why it oxidizes. So never feel like you have to use just a silicone or some sort of liquid or cream primer. You can use powders as a primer as well, especially if you have oily skin. Bad makeup product number six is foundation that is too greasy. Now, if you guys follow me on TikTok, which if you don't, you should. I'll put my little link right here. I talked about this foundation was the worst one I've ever tried and I got so much hate on it. Everyone was like, what do you mean you don't like that foundation? That's my favorite. I got so much hate. I still feel the way I feel, you guys. I'm sorry. It's my personal opinion. It does not work for me. But if you noticed, I didn't throw it out. It's still here. She's still with us. The Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. Some people love it. It was a greasy ass mess on me, you guys. I looked like a fried chicken wing. I'm not even exaggerating. Like it was so greasy on me. So let me show you on the back of my hand what this sucker looks like. Okay, so it gives good coverage, but it just was way, way, way too dewy for me. And that's saying a lot because I like dewy foundation. So if your foundation is too greasy, what you can do is the same thing I just talked about is take a powder, put it underneath on your skin to help mattify your skin. It'll help this foundation look a little bit greasy. I did try it with this foundation. I still wasn't really, really happy with the results, but it was better. It really did work. So put some powder underneath. That's going to help it. The other thing that you can do as well is you can pick up some loose powder and actually mix it with the foundation. So it's going to get a little bit thick. I'm not going to lie. So you have to use just a little bit. But do you guys see the texture of that foundation change just by me picking up the slightest bit of powder and mixing it with that foundation and it's going to mattify it a little bit. Now again, it's not ideal because it can get a little thick, but if you use just a little bit of powder in there, it can help it not look so greasy. And then the other fix that you can do, and I have tried this one, I got okay results with it, with this foundation, is you can use the greasy foundation on just the places you want to highlight. So the top of your cheekbones, center of your forehead, maybe a little bit on your chin, and then you can take your matte foundation, like the Milani Conceal and Perfect, apply it on the rest of the face. You're kind of mixing two foundations together. You can even mix these two together. I've done that as well, where you take a super matte foundation, you take the greasy one, mix it together, and you can come up with something like that. If, if you don't have a matte foundation already, don't waste money and going buy one to fix the bad one, I would say. But if you have it on hand, why not mix them together? Let's try to salvage this sucker. Bad makeup product number seven is chalky highlighter. I usually I find these in the drugstore brands for some reason, which I'm like, why get it together? You guys, why can you not get highlighters good? This is not a chalky highlighter. I don't have one in my collection because I did not keep those years ago, but I'm gonna show you an example. So the best thing you can do is when you apply a highlighter, if it's too chalky, it's looking really powdery on the skin. What I really, really like to do is after I do my whole face, I apply that highlighter, I take a dome brush like this and I really pick up just the slightest bit and then I dab it on top of that chalky highlighter. What it's going to do is almost turn it into a cream. It's going to turn it very dewy. It's going to give you this luminosity, but it's going to get rid of that chalkiness or that powderiness because you're putting a liquid on top of it. But be just gentle. I like to really just stipple it on because you don't want it to get too thick or cakey. You want just the slightest bit. That's why I say work it into the brush on the back of your hands. There's just a little bit of product. Stipple it on top of that chalky highlighter and it'll help blend it in. The other thing that you can do with your chalky highlighter is you can scrape a little bit off and mix it with a lip gloss. You can apply it on and now you have a beautiful shimmering lip gloss. You can apply that chalky highlighter on the eyes because sometimes with skin, things that can look really chalky when you put them on the eyes, especially a shimmer, it may work a little bit better. So again, don't feel afraid that you have to use these just on the spot of the face that it was marketed to you. You can use it on the eyes. And then bad product number eight is going to be products that have a smell. Now I'm going to keep it real with you guys with products that have a smell. It happens a lot with foundations. To be honest, I don't know exactly why it's some sort of raw material that they're using in there that has a strong smell. So that's why some brands use fragrances. It's not because they want to add it. It's because they're trying to hide a raw material that has naturally a bad smell. If you have a product that has a bad smell, you got to toss that shit out. Thank you.
I'm sorry. Like, I know I can give some great tips in this video, guys. I'm not a miracle worker, though. There's nothing, in my opinion, that you could safely do to a product that smells bad. If it smells bad at that point, I'm just like, you know what? That was a waste. It is what it is. <laughs> So anyways, you know, I hope this helps you figure out how to save your money and don't toss out those bad products. Let's figure out some creative ways to still make them work for you. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. Don't forget to follow my channel for more updates. I will see you guys next week for another makeup video. Have a great one and I'll see you soon. Bye.